Hi there boys and girls and welcome back to the Random Geek channel. So it's been a while since I've um, posted up a video uh, but we're looking at something pretty interesting today and first things first I bought an EUC so for those of you who don't know that's an electronic um, unicycle. So I was thinking about what to buy next because um, on my channel I, I do like a lot of um, you know pretty much tech videos and I've done a, a series on electric scooters and I thought what next um, sh should I get another scooter should I get another skateboard should I get a one wheel and yep <laughs> I wasn't deciding to get one of these and I was driving home one day and I saw another rider riding one of these around so the great thing about living in my current state uh, which is Queensland Australia is um, it, electric um, vehicles well um, to micro to mobility vehicles actually really really popular so scooters um, e-bikes um, you see electric skateboards they're pretty much everywhere and it's one of the very um, um, few states in Australia in which it's actually legal to ride these vehicles however you rarely ever see people riding EUCs and it's something that isn't very common so I was really surprised um, I always knew that um, these things existed um, given that I like electronic vehicles but it's always been the back of my mind um, mainly because you don't really s see it that common and pretty much um, in terms of the um, safety aspects I always had a thing in the back of my mind that if I were to crash one of these I would injure myself um, pretty badly However, <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing. It's kind of ironic because you know I've, I've like ride you know pretty much um, motorcycles, um, electric scooters. You, you know, riding e skate, you will fall. So regardless of what you're doing, you like um, in, in terms of risks, they're pretty much similar. So I don't know why I had to, had to, had to, had that in the back of my head. Anyway, um, while driving home, I saw. Um, a dude um, riding one of these and I was like wow this looks pretty cool so I hopped onto like YouTube and had a look and I was like okay I really need to get one of these so I've been looking around and I settled on this brand here so this is the King Song um, 14D um, so this comes this is the fourth generation wheel it's actually it, this came out in 2016, I believe. So it's quite an old wheel. Um, it's their fourth generation, but um, there's not that many um, EUC companies out there. So in terms of their the main wheel brands, they're pretty much King Song, um, um, In Motion, and Gotway. So you're looking at those two, um, three brands there. There's brand new brands like the um, Veteran Sherman, which was just um, released a couple of months ago. And um, yeah, if, if you had like a lot of cash and really willing to, to actually push these vehicles, like you know, definitely have a just look at that. But the releases of these wheels are pretty much far and full. Um, so they're far apart, um, they don't release that often. And so this wheel, even though it came out in 2016, what I've got here is the 2018 model. Um, they did revise the um, motherboard on this and I will point it out in a second. So this video at the moment, um, I'll do a ride video later on. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a look, um, see what's in the box and what you get with the product and just go through the actual specs and I'll have a, a chat of what I think about this um, after having, a, I think for, I had this for about two weeks now. So, um, obviously I've already pulled it out of the box. Um, so the box is actually right here. Gigantic box that came through. Um, it's, it's quite heavy. Um, I believe it was 14 and a half kilos. Um, in terms of EUC weight, this, this is pretty lightweight. And one of the reasons why I got um, um, this model here was in terms of the reviews that I saw and people writing it, this was a good starter wheel because I've never actually ridden like an EUC before. And Trust me, um, the, learnings, um, the learning curve in this thing was um, pretty intense. Um, and this is coming from a person who, you know, who grew up, you know, skateboarding, rollerblading, you know, you know riding, you know, you know, skateboards in the, you know, in the 70s and 80s. 
Um, I've always been really good at um, um, balancing on my feet. So, you know, skateboarding, um, snowboarding, ice skating. No, I was even on the um, ch gymnastics team like during high school. So I was actually pretty um, easy on, on my actual feet. This took a l <laughs> it was interesting to learn. Um, I probably should have taken advice, you know, and watched a, a bit more like, you know, um, videos on learning how to ride before I like, like jumped on and tried to wing it myself. And I so, I, so I wasted about an hour, probably an hour, um, just mucking around. And you can see by the state of the wheel, um, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, you will fall and you will injure yourself. Uh, make sure that you actually protected, you know, I had bruises and, you know, places that I've never thought I would have bruises. You know, you pull muscles, you use muscles that you've never thought that you actually had. Riding this thing is a completely different beast and I might make like, like another video or like a, uh, on how to actually start riding these things and the tips that I've learned um, doing it the hard way and how you should learn how to ride properly. And, um, but once you learn how to ride, um, it's like magic. Um, yeah, I'm actually hooked on these things now. Um, so I've only had it for two weeks, but it, like I'm quite busy. But when I have a chance to ride, I would hop on this thing and I would belt it out. And I think I've like done like, you know, 100, 100 kilometers in the last couple, like two or three rides, you know? And I just can't wait to actually um, jump up, and up on this thing again and go for another ride. Um, I might do this after I make this video. Um, I've actually cleaned up the wheel a bit because you know it was covered in dirt and scratches. I've been taking it on trails and off. Yeah, it's absolutely it's something completely different in terms of riding these things. It's like falling, but it's controlled falling. It's um, I don't really just trying to think of, of this. It's, it's like you you fall forward and it's like the feeling that you get when you're ice skating, but your feet aren't moving and and you can just control the wheel in, in a level that I've never thought that I should be able to control um, any um, so you know with skateboarding it's, it's, it's quite actually different but the level of finesse and control that I can get riding on one of these things is on a completely different level and I'm completely hooked um, I'll be getting this one and once I work out the actual limits of this wheel oh, Man, I'll be, I'll be getting like a second wheel. I'll be upgrading for sure because I'm pretty much hooked for life. So anyway, so enough of me rambling about that. Um, I'm gonna show you what's actually in the box. So in the box you don't get much. So big Mac massive box and you get a box inside the box. Um, it's pretty, um, the, the opening experience of these things is not too fantastic. Um, I, and I believe that's um, common across the entire um, um, board of, of wheels. So regardless of what you buy, um, I think the I think the uh, the brand new King Song um, 18 um, um, S, which 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 which, which, came, which just came out, um, you, you do get a great opening experience with that because they've actually um, um, hammed these things up. But now, um, yeah, so in the box, what you get is the wheel um, in a package bag, and it's pretty much just foam to protect it. So as you see here, this is the actual foam that um, came with the wheel. I am going to build um, my own like um, a wheel um, stand for these things. Probably some, you know, you know, some piping or something. But I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. But at the moment, I'm just using the foam that comes in there. Holds the wheel quite well. So first things first, when I go through, so manual, um, basic manual. And you can see on the, the images of the manual, uh, these are the launch um, models of the wheels when they first came out in 2016. So it goes from the 14, um, 14D all the way up to the 16XL, I believe. Um, so these are the, the, the old um, um, wheels with the version one motherboards and the really tacky King Song um, branding on the side which is absolutely horrible. So I'm glad that I actually got the version two of, of the wheel uh, because they've um, reduced the amount of, of King Song branding and you don't get that really, really annoying Hello King Song um, um, song when you start the, um, the actual wheel up. So, but yeah, this is basic manual, um, really kind of horrible English. Um, I don't recommend it. Um, 
but yeah, basically these things, you can work it out. Um, you know, so it's quite easy because there's not much to learn and everything's inside the app. And we will we'll talk about the app. And before everyone crucifies me, I know the King's Song app sucks. Um, so if you want to write these things, what, what you want to do is you want to download, um, um, what is it? Um, EU, EU SeaWorld if you're on Android. Um, thanks Sebastian for writing that fantastic, fantastic app. But I will show the King's Song app for completeness. And if you're on Apple, you want Tarkness Bot, um, just download that. And you, 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 you hook it up via Bluetooth and it unlocks the entire potential of, of your wheel. But I might make it like another video on those two apps later on. But anyway, um, yeah, I pretty much flipped it through. The English is really bad, ignore it. Um, yeah, okay. So what you get also in the world is nothing much. So all you get here is basic charger. So this, if you've, you know, we didn't like an electric skateboard or if you already own like an e, um, EUC, this is your really generic um, Chinese adapter and you plug it in and it has a little red LED light there. It, it's red and once, once it's charged it turns it green. This one is a 67.2 uh, volt and you're charging at 2 amps so it's compatible at um, 100 to 240 volts. So, if you're in like a country that only uses 110, um, in Australia we use 240, perfectly fine. So pretty much just a standard charger, not nothing too fantastic. So you aren't gonna do fast charging on this. Uh, but the great thing about this thing is the battery size is not too large. Um, if it's also a disadvantage because you will see it on range, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so it's gonna take about three hours to actually charge this thing from zero to thing. So in terms of EUCs, that's actually quite decent. So uh, but as I said, it's, it's yeah, it's just a basic Australian plug there, Australian New Zealand, and it's a three pin plug, and you orient, uh, orientate the actual plug based on this groove here. When I first pulled this out, I thought it was broken because see how it's rattling there, um, in terms of this ring here. Um, the actual ring is designed so you can tighten it up, and it will um, attach to the um, not the grass there. Um, it will attach to the power plug. Um, I don't know why I've actually did this because um, the plug fits um, very snugly onto the charging port and I had never had an issue with it and I don't want to actually screw this on because if I ever walk over and I trip over the wire um, it's, it's either going to pull the plug out of the wall or um, my um, the EUC is going to go flying across the room. I don't want it that. So just think about like, is your, you know, when you, like the old Apple products with the MagSafe, or you know, if you snooze at like a Microsoft Surface or whatever, they, um, it's not magnetic as such, but you know what I mean. If you were to fall over the wire, the thing would just um, come out of the socket and your device is protected. All right, next things you get, really, really basic is well interesting um, because the reason why it's interesting is you really don't need these so you come with um these are 30 amp um fuses so these are um fuses that you normally see in like automobiles um and you can buy them like hardware stores and 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 auto shops um so these were pretty much to protect the motherboard and these were only relevant to the version one motherboards because I'll, I'll see if I can open up on a wheel. I think it's on this side. No, so that's a charging point. But if you flip the wheel around, so it's quite heavy. So this is the USB um, port here. It's so USB port, so if you ever need to charge your um, mobile phone or whatever device um, while you're at why? because you know, these things contain like a giant um, battery in it, you know. 18650 cells, um, so obviously configured in a you know up to 70, um, six, six or seven volts for this one. You know, you know, these devices um, operate at high voltages. I will talk about the voltages in the writing video because um, most of these things actually start off at 60 volts and go up to like 100 like the volt systems, but anyway. You've got a USB port to tell you you can charge your phone and what whatnot, but underneath it you will see a slot there. And in the first generation wheels, you could slide um, these fuses in. So 
if you were to, um, to push the um, EUC too much or you would um, overload the actual motor, um, what would happen is um, to protect the um, MOSFETs um, on the actual board and the um, circuitry, um, the, the fuses will burn out and you could replace the fuses. However, this slot is just existing because we've been using the same shell in the version 2 um, boards. You can't actually slide these in at all. So the blades um, fuses actually go on the motherboard. So if you do need to um, change them out, you have to open up the shell and replace the fuses that way. However, the reason why they've actually done this is because in the um, 2018 models, they use a completely different motherboard and the failure rate is much, much less. So um, I think when um, these wheels launched, um, they were getting one, one and a half, uh, no, one to five percent failure rate, which now it's down um, under three, I believe. So yeah, so yeah, so I don't know why I've got these, and I've got plenty of these at home, because you know, if you work on any vehicle that's been made in the last like 10 to 15 years, they just use these um, in um, the cars, and you, yeah, you switch them out. But it's nice that they've thrown them in there. And that's all you really get inside the actual box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the wheel itself. So um, Kingsong 14D um, comes in two battery, um, version so there's a 340 um, watt version and this is the 420 which is the larger battery my advice to anyone who's gonna get one is afford um, um, this is in any um, model so if you're buying you know a skateboard and you see an e-bike um, if, if there's multiple versions of the battery definitely get the highest battery capacity that you could afford. Um, that's the most expensive part of, of, of these devices and you're pretty much buying for the battery packs and the battery packs is gonna infect your um, your range mostly, but in some cases it will, will affect the um, the torque and the power that you get out of the motor. So I've got the 420, so this is as high as I got. Um, thinking about it now, I probably should have gone with a larger wheel. Um, probably should have gone with the, um, like the yeah, the 16x at the moment, but then again, that's three times the price if you do get this one. So, uh, for the, those guys that are actually new, um, my channel focuses also on actual tech, but it also focuses on tech um, at the best um, value for money that you can get. And I believe that this wheel is one of the best um, valued wheels that you can get, and also one of the best um, starter wheels. Um, so, like I'm starting off, but yeah, but as I said, I'm, I'm actually hooked and I can also f already feel the actual limits of this wheel. I've actually pushed it to its actual maximum speed. It's, you know, the way which you can actual turns. Um, I've actually got like foam pads on the way so I can make my own pads. So I can start like um, doing like jumps and, and curves and stuff. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, so definitely if you are just using this for a commuter wheel, this will be the perfect commuter wheel or just a hobby wheel. Because um yeah, I would like this to, you know, um, after work I'm having a shitty day. Um what I would like to do is you know just hop on this wheel, go for a ride for like you know 30 minutes an hour, clear your head. And it's it's yeah the feeling that you get on, on these things is absolutely fantastic. So in terms of the wheel, alright. Build wise, um I I like it. Um it's sturdy, it's got a trolley handle, so if you press that down here, trolley handle extends up. Perfect height to actually like roll it around. It's quite sturdy. The handle is fantastic. Um, I like it. However, it is um, um, tilted um, on preference for right-handed users. So I, if you are left-handed users, um, like like user, you, you are gonna feel it quite awkward because it's gonna, um, yeah, but what, what you can do is because these wheels are actually bi-directional, you just flip it around and, and use it that way. But I'm not sure if I even said that right, but okay. So trolley wheel, polycarbonate um, housing. So you can see it's got scratches galore, and that's because I've been riding this for card. Oh, I've stacked it a couple of times, and you and promise me, you are. I promise you, you are going to stack this while loading out a ride. It's just the nature of the beach, um, <laughs> of the beast. Can't even speak properly, and if you're going to buy these things and you aren't got, uh, and you want these things to look pristine I mean this is the wrong sport for you um, because these wheels you know 
you know, you're going at speed and, and when you're falling, you're falling, you know, you're on grass, you're on gravel, you know, dirt tracks, you name it. Um, it's actually held up quite well, besides from the actual scratches, I haven't had any cracks or, you know, I've, I've had scrapes here and there, and you can see I've got scrapes here, on the handle here, and on the front, stacked it up the front, just like, see if they're thinking, yeah, stacked it there. So, yeah, I've, I've trashed this thing around, it's sort of quite well. It's it's really sturdy ass um, plastic here. The only thing is is uh, you know shiny piano black not my favorite thing. So this is where I do have to agree with um, Marquez Brownlee matte black everything. Um, if this thing was in matte black, it would have been perfect. I, I do know that these wheels actually launched um, in in pure white. Um, I would have hated that. Oh, oh you know, white on, on white plastic, shiny white plastic, you're gonna scratch it, you're gonna go to it, it's gonna just look horrible. The, the black actually hides it quite well. Um, but however, you know, you will see the scratches and you just have to be comfortable that you are gonna scratch these things. It's like, you know, if when, when you're riding a skateboard, one wheel, you know, you are gonna do crazy things that you, you just gotta accept that these things are gonna scratch up and I'm perfectly fine with this. I've actually cleaned it up a bit, um, so, um, if you notice a bit of like grass stuck everywhere and grass on the wheels, that's because, you know, I've been doing a bit of off um, trail riding in it and riding it on, you know, on grass as well, uh, as long as actual road. And yeah, it's just gonna get dirty, but um, I've cleaned it up a bit because what I'm gonna do is, um, this wheel was not gonna look anything like this in um, probably next hour, because I'm gonna I'm start like taping it down and um, yeah, and once I order the foam pads, I'll be making like jumping pads to make sure. Because these pads, this is, this is um, leather padding. It's actually quite hard and I understand the reason why it needs to be hard because you do need to actually brace your, your, your shins and your, you know, yeah, and your ankles on it. Um, I will open up and show you later, but yeah. But they're not very comfortable, and after a while, they, they do start peeling. Um, peeling's not so much of an issue because these pads are designed to be um, taken off. They're only attached by um, double-sided tape, so so you can switch out the pads to to comfort, and which I'll be doing because um, I don't find these too comfortable, um, especially riding. Um, so yeah, so highly um, customizable. So I'm like, I'm gonna. Got the top, so let's go around. <laughs> All right, so on top, what you got here is the power button and a little sticker saying to download the King Song app. I do recommend to download the King Song app first off because you do need to unlock the wheel. And one of the mistakes that I did was um, when I first got it, pulled it out, and I turned it on, and as soon as I rolled it anywhere, it would start beeping like crazy and wouldn't move. And my mistake was is you do need to um, download the Kingston app and make sure that it's unlocked and um, and it's not going to be very um, obvious to you guys um, because um, when you open the actual app it says that the that the wheel is 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 already unlocked but make sure that you find the actual button and you know lock it and then unlock it again and it, and it should get rid of the beeping noise and it'll be and it'll start working. Um, after that, you know, um, go in and just change some of the settings and um, unlock the full speed of the wheel and make sure you set it up to the right riding mode that you want and then switch over to EEC or darken spot. And up there is the light sensor on the wheel. So, um, so this wheel is actually quite intelligent because when you start riding it at night and the lighting starts to actually dim down, the lights will turn on automatically. And it's pretty fantastic when you're riding and yeah and you don't even have to um to worry about it you will notice that the lighting um if i see if i can get it oh i'll just go back so i'm gonna shoot this in a spare room the lights on both sides are exactly the same and this is because it's bi-directional um and what i mean by bi-directional is you can ride this backwards and forwards and it doesn't matter which orientation that you put your feet on so you can ride that way you put Put your feet that way, you put your feet that way, it doesn't really matter. And the wheel will actually detect, you know, which way is forward and it will switch the lights over to forward or backwards. So um, 
if it's with, uh, for example, if you're writing down, you know, that way, um, that light will actually um, turn red and it will be your stop and your um, parking light. And if writing the other way, that would be your flashlight. Uh, the light's okay, um, it's not too um, bright. If you are writing on late, you know, night, make sure that you're wearing three um, reflective gear um, attached like a night light onto you um, or flashing lights so people can see you. Um, this wheel was actually pretty good because um, if you're really into the, you know, the LED lighting, um, I think it's a bit tacky but um, I do understand the actual need for it. If you're writing at night and you want to be as visible as possible is along here is you've got LED lighting strips and you've got four strips so um, two on each side and when you turn it on you can change the, the lighting you can turn it to um, rotating speeding uh, it was slowly pulsating pulsating lights um, and it, it increases um, to visibility it's also quite fun if you're doing like um, um, tonight rides with um, other riders it's um, it's kind of like a fun way to actually do it. Also, it, it, it plays as a battery meter. I think it's like 13 LED lights. And um, when you're standing still, those lights will actually switch to, I think the default color is, um, is it? yeah, I, I can't remember what the default color is um, because I'm not really looking at it um, directly because I'm, I'm always on the app to, to figure out, you know, what, what the voltage is and what the battery thing, but it, it will give you an indication of the battery life and how much you've got left. Um, so yeah, so Shell, we've, we've talked about the padding. I will open it up because there's extra padding on this side. I will, um, so it's first, uh, next thing, but we're talking about speakers. So there's four speakers on this thing. So two on each side. These are five watt um, speakers on, oh, sorry. Keep the camera focused now. So you've got five watts um, speakers on your side. So you've got four in total, 20, 20 watts. So you can connect um, your phone. Uh, so it's when you've got your phone connected, you can uh, connect this as an audio device. So when you're riding, if you want to ride with music, or if you want to be that, that annoying guy um, to, um, riding around, but if you're by yourself and you just want to play music, um, while riding, it's 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 pretty cool. It's, it's it's pretty cool feature. It's not fantastic. It's really basic speakers. Um, the sound quality is is pretty meh. Um, so it's nothing to, to ride on about. I would rather like prefer just to wear some like you know proper headphones or the earphones while you're riding. Um, but I kind of tend not to do that. Or if I'm doing it, I wear like um, headphones or earphones that allow audio pass through, so I can hear um, traffic. I just you know I can hear noise um, around me. Just make sure that I'm um, you know aware of what's going on around me, just in case I do have to react um, really quickly. Um, so yeah. So other notable things here is charging port so it's basic three pin charging port if you've ever bought you know an electric skateboard in the last um, couple of years um, this has looked familiar to you um, so yeah so and then there's a little um, uh, mark there to make sure that you slot it in so you, you orientate it the right way and as you can see it's actually a um, no no we know got this little thing and I'll shake it around you can thread that in to make sure it's in place. I wouldn't bother, um, personally. Um, I don't really see the actual need for it. And the other side we've already talked about is your basic, your USB port. And, and that, that charges up five um, volts and just one amp. So, but the um, newer models of these ones, um, like you will get, you know, like um, two USB ports you want to uh, do charging and they do up to two amps. And, with the newer wheels, with the charging ports, you will get, um, you know, fast charging with like multiple ports um, and higher ambitures. Um, but then again, they have, ex you know, crazy um, batteries on the newer models. I think the Sherman is like 3.2 kilowatts, which is absolutely crazy. All right, so in terms of the Kingsong branding, it's no longer on the pants, thank God. The only thing that you'll have it on is, is these random stickers here and on the um, foot pedals. I will take it out of this foam thing. Just hold on a second while I take it off. 
All right, so we're gonna check that side. As you can see, it's pretty dirty, but uh, you, you will get that like that anyway. So in terms of the actual branding, you only get it on the foot pedal and the foot pedal here. So King Song actual branding. So in terms of the pedals, they're actually quite nice. Um, I like it how the King Song wheels are slightly um, on an angle and it makes riding a lot more um, comfortable. Kind of wish um, these pedals were actually higher. Um, you do get scraping on the wheels, and especially if you're doing really tight turning. Um, so how you turn on these things, you turn either with your, yeah, you like like you lean with your body, you you bend your um, your knees, and also you rotate your actual torso. Um, so these pedals, um, especially when doing actual tight turnings, they will scrape onto the thing, and if you if you seeing the actual state of these wheels i've scraped these a couple of times here here yeah scraping on the actual wheels i wish they were higher and I, I, um, the newer models they've actually fixed this uh, things like um and also the other brands so emotion yeah they've actually got a lot higher wheels um, um I can understand that they've got a lower speed because it probably helps with balance because you're at a slower center of gravity. But yeah, I, that's the only big thing that I have against with this wheel. So anyway, with the pad, uh, when you buy it, you'll get this rubber um, snooping pad that's stuck on here and it's on both sides. Yeah, it was really weird. So I pulled it off with a bit of like adhesive still in here and I just popped it on the side here. I'll probably get rid of it completely now um, because I'll, I'll start making my own pants. I like it how it's, um, so this is pretty coarse um, grip tape on here. Nice but that went with grip tape. I, I would have got rid of that branding off completely and just gone with grip tape. You know, if you know, you know um, manufacturers who are putting you know, you know rubber and uh, on foot pedals, and also like foot stands like on scooters and stuff, don't do it. Um, rubber gets slippery when it's wet and you don't want, you know, to lose footing when you're riding these things. Um, you know, there's, there's um, times when I've ridden the, um, the nine bot scooters and because they use um, rubber on their on their stands, your foot slides when it, even when your shoes are slightly wet or a slight bit of rain and you could lose control. So. Personally, I'll, I'll, I might peel this off and I might just um, put on like full on um, grip tape on there. But yeah, it's not too bad. In that case, yeah, same thing on that side, but yeah, the, the pedals are low, so I, I've scraped it a, a couple of times. Probably something I wouldn't used to. I, look, I don't really care too much, but you know, it's just um, an improvement to what they could have done. Anyways, yeah, a bit of grass coming off here because uh, I try to clean as much best as I can, but all right. So we'll go on to the tire and then we will go through some of these bets to the wheel. So you will see this is a CST wheel. So probably every single EUC that you'll buy um, on stock standard wheels will uh, have these wheels. So they're their Changshin tires. So they're straight from China. All these products are actually made in China. Um, that's where EUC is actually started and that's where it became popular. So, um, and you know, if you were, um, these things are extremely popular, you know, in Asia, and you know, you, you see it in China, you see it in Taiwan, you go over to Europe and they're pretty much everywhere. In Australia, you know, you see them occasionally. I've only seen like two riders out in the world, but you know, that was enough to figure out that you get given this um, wheel here. So this is a 14 inch wheel. So um, 14, 14 inches is perfectly like, like rideable in that case. Um, I, I might think about upgrading later on. Um, probably not something too big, but we'll see what actually happens. It's a 14 inches by 2.125 wheels. It's gonna be interesting once I get a flat or, you know, if I, you know, you know, you know fingers crossed that I don't get one, but um, if you do get a natural flat, it's, it's trying to source these wheels. And also because the inner tube is, um, is, is bent that way and, and this is, common for these wheels because when you're spinning around in the housing you don't want these wheels to um to actually hit um these sides and also um because these wheels um when you put in the tubing and the tires the tire tires are normally 
set to one direction. Um, we'll see, you know, because you know, it'll be interesting, you know, uh, because I'm, I'm doing some off um, trail riding as well. You know, so this is a street tire, maybe if I switch this to like a snobby tire or whatever. But yeah, see how we go. Yep, so you, um, instructions to inflate, so you're looking at 240 to 310 um, um, kilopascals here, so that equates to about 35 to 45 psi, or roughly 2.4 to 3.6 um, bars of pressure. My advice if you're starting to ride is inflate this to the maximum um, pressure, because you are going to find riding a bit easier. The, the feels a bit different um, to riding and you will decrease the chances for that, that, that you'll get a flat or you know nasty things will happen when you're actually riding. So yeah, so just tires, basic like that things. Um, there are videos on how to actually change the tire but um, we'll hit that bridge when we get the bridge. Uh, so yep, so in terms of specs, um, so first, so I'm just gonna throw it back in here. So this thing is quite heavy. So this is 14 and a half kilos. It's quite awkward because I was trying to move it while holding the camera at the same time. So we'll go through some, some specs. So if you're going with the, the, the 420 model of this one, it's gonna weigh um, about 14 and a half kilos. If you go with the um, 340 um, watt hour, um, you're looking at, I think it's a kilo and a half less. So it's like 12 and a half, 13 kilos, I believe. So in terms of EUCs, this, this is actually quite light. So the, the fantastic thing about this model here is its portability. So with the trolley handle, um, even when it's switched off, you can, um, yeah, like, like you can just roll it around like a piece of um, luggage. And in terms of the wheels, and in terms of the size of this wheel, um, for the current wheels, this is fantastic because um, yeah, it's 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 really portable, um, and you can just roll it around. Um, so it's about the same weight if you were carrying like a all terrain like longboard, um, and because then you know with the larger size wheels, like they go up to crazy crazy weights. So I think the veteran Sherman is like 50, 50, 60 kilos. Uh, yeah, it's about is that forty kilos or whatever absolutely crazy um, in terms of the model here so the, the ranges on these things actually vary depending on the model so obviously the the battery size is kind of matter so i believe you get um, 15 miles on the 340 and about 20 miles on the 420 model so yep so with any electronic electric vehicle um the, the, the few ranges take that with a pinch of salt because um, i've said it multiple times before um in my, my, my other videos um the ranges is, is um they normally test it you know really lightweight weight high weight rider 70 kilograms uh, um normally to ride it on perfect conditions flat roads at the lowest um speed um setting me i i tend to max this thing out you know almost all the time and I'm considerably a lot heavier, so I'm like 85 kilos, of, of believe, at the moment. So a lot of extra like 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 weight, and I'm riding it, you know, not in flat ground. I'm riding it off trailing, I'm riding the grass, I'm going up down hills, you name it. So realistically, 15 to 20 miles, you know, which equates to you know, you know, 20, I think 22 kilometers to about 36 in our case. So on this battery. If I was the, the, the you know, expected um, ride on this thing, that equates to, you know, 36 kilometers, I believe. Um, I don't know. But yeah, but I'm getting, uh, I'm getting 20, 25, 26 kilometers riding moderately. And if I'm pushing this hard, I'm getting about probably about 20, 22 kilometers. Uh, but there is a, big but in that statement because there's the ch ch usable um, battery in here because you will notice massive voltage sag while riding this and that's to do with the high 
voltages which is about dead news and I will talk a lot more about this in um, I'll make another ride video in which I will talk about how it rides and, and I will talk a lot about the actual voltage tag but you will notice the voltage the sags on this thing so yeah so I, got, I, I get around anywhere between 22 to 26 kilometers um, and that's riding hard and I'm a lot heavier than your average rider um, so 18 watt 800 watt motor in this thing it does peak um, at I think 1600 I could be wrong but I believe it's 1600 and um, if you are going to get these things bare minimum get the 800 watt motor because um, if, if you need to ride any sort of hill or um, rough terrain you will need that extra like torque when these things first launched uh, like you could get multiple 500 watt motors um, not ideal because because you need that um, extra power because the only thing that's really keeping you up on these things is the forward um, motion of the wheel so you're using that forward um, angular actual motion to, to keep you up right if you do get an actual um, if you overpower the wheel or you do get a cut off you will fall and you will face plant um, yeah we'll talk about safety gear in another video because um, more important when you're riding the, the other things you, you do really really need to focus on, on safety gear while riding this, these things because they are inherently I, I believe a bit more risky than, than riding other things because when you're full you are going to face plant you're going to face plant hand hard and you're most likely going to do it in asphalt you know yeah that's going to hurt um so 800 watt motor on this thing. The maximum payload on this thing is 120 kilograms. So, you know, so for you Americans, I think it's 250 pounds, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. In terms of riding up hills, it maxes out at 30 degree inclines. And I've taken it on a 30 degree incline and it handles perfectly fine. It's, yeah. Um, like, you just have to be careful um, um, when you're up, up inclines because you do have to get snooze to controlling you know the forward motion of the wheel I mean going down the actual hill you have to um, make sure that you're comfortable leaning back to control um, the regenerative um, um, you know you know just to slow it down what we're going down there actual hill so yeah so yeah so I do've got the actual weights here so it's 14 and a half kilograms yeah I'm just reading off my phone so 14 and a half um, um, kilograms on the 420 model and um, in terms of the 340 watt version is 13.6 so pedal height uh, I can see is 12 and a half centimeters 125 millimeters wish it was higher even if it was like you know an inch higher so you know two and a half centimeters would have been perfect but um, as I said um, brand new wheels out now I think they fixed it up on the um, King Song 16 so in terms of other dimensions um so this um thing is actually as i said really portable so in terms of um portability the only thing that's going to be smaller and better portable for is probably the um cotway um M m10 um freeze so that the little um pocket rocket um but yeah and it's similarly priced as thing so so in terms of the heights, uh, so height wise, so this is 15 uh, by 26 by 65 centimeters. So if you're gonna write this to work, throw this in your locker or you know, if you can, um, you know, just put it underneath your table and just charge it on the way. It's three hour charge, is, you know, is easily um, doable. And yeah, it's it's portable around, you know, um, as I said before, the, um, M, M10, the um, M10 free, obviously you like, probably about three, three quarters the size of this. If you were like riding with your kids, if you can get your kids to actually um, go riding with you. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the little um, pocket rocket. But I'm quite happy that I actually got this one, but I'll, um, I'll definitely will be upgrading um, just later down the track, because you know, because I, I want that extra power and torque and everything. But yeah, so, and last thing we're going to talk about is price. So one of the things that really um, attracted me to this product was the price. The price is bloody fantastic on this thing. So when you start looking at um, EUCs, EUCs, they're expensive. 
Okay, so if you're just looking at the, the newer wheels, so I think the 16X in Australia goes in for about three, three, three thousand uh, dollars. This one here, I got for eleven $1 hundred um, Australian dollars. Um, so if you worked it out, that's about seven hundred and fifties. Um, the Australian, um, yeah, the the Australian dollars has decreased like crazy. Um, ever since coronavirus so it has yeah so but if you are in the United States or if you're in the uh, in a European country so if you, if you buy this in euros if you can get this for 700 euros for in America you get this for 750 or 800 um, US dollar dollars but for the price you're paying um, yeah I, I love it um, yeah even with the larger, you know, 16 inch wheels, you're only paying an extra, you know, 600, 700 bucks for a wheel. You know, things like, you know, the brand new, you know, like King Zongs, um, you know, you know, the V18S and the, the Emotion um, V11, you know, and, and the Veteran Sherman, you look, you'd be looking at four or 5,000 Australian dollars. So, so this is a bargain. So what you're getting is an absolute bargain. Um, I wish I had, I don't think I wish it was matte black, better, um, a taller um, foot pedals on this thing. And if it had like a slightly larger battery, and I'll be absolutely happy with this thing because you know this thing rides right, spec wise 30 kilometers an hour. Um, I managed to hit 33 kilometers on this on, on this thing. Um, yeah, but the um, stupid King Song app like, crashed on me and it only recorded. You know, 25 or some stupid thing like that, but I, I managed to be it on my um, my GPS watch. Um, yeah, and I was going, you know, above the 30, so you can actually push these things faster. Um, the only thing I, I find annoying is uh, King Song, uh, and you can't turn it off. Is when you push the wheels to its limits, it will really start. No, scream at you, you know, please decelerate, it was, and it's massively loud, absolutely, yeah, and, it's, and it ruins the experience, so King Song, you know, if you could, you know, make sure that, you know, if we had the option to, to turn those alarms off, because, you know, because I know when I'm pushing the wheel too hard, because I can feel the um, tilt back on the wheel, because it, it will start tilt uh, like crazy also when I'm running out of batteries I know when I'm like slow on battery because I can feel the voltage sag I can feel the um, limits on the speed you don't have to scream at me like every single you know, you know five ten seconds you know you know low battery please recharge and it's absolutely obnoxious um, and especially when you're riding around people it scares the hell out of people and it's really embarrassing as well when you're riding and you're like holy crap um, yeah, if, if they manage to fix that, or if you could turn it off, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, think of it better, I might mean, like, grab some tape and tape it over at the, like the speakers, because they don't really use speakers, or if they made it possible in their future wheels to able to send those, you know, those, um, those announcements, you know, it's like to your earphones or whatever, you know, so, so you're not being that annoying, obnoxious person, you know, when you're trying to ride and it's, there's people around and yeah, not good, no, it's not good. Like I don't mind like the beeping warnings, like, the beeping warnings are there and, and you do rely on, on, on the beeping warnings because you, you know when you're hitting the actual limits or you've got a fault. Those I don't mind, but you know, those announcements, you know, it's like getting rid of the Hello King song song and, when these wheels first launched to maybe like think about you know um, doing that as, as well with these wheels here anyway that's enough of me um, um, you know yeah that's, that's enough um, this, this video has gone for way too long um, I'm gonna end it here so yeah so as normal you know um, pop us a like you know um, leave us a comment at the bottom you know and if you think that you know with the information that I've provided it is useful um, just um, yeah just press the subscribe button it's on a small channel you know and if you leave a comment and it's you know and it's it's not a like not nah, comment and you need a bit of help I am very help um, I'm I'm very like you know a 
approachable in terms of uh, I will respond to your comments and I'll try to help you out and um, for those guys who've been leaving comments and um, have been you know you know nice comments you know saying a little bit of thank you you know really appreciate it and also you know people you know which have asked questions and I've tried to answer them and you know some of my subscribers have jumped in and and, and they've offered their advice as well I, I I love that so yeah keep it up guys anyway I'll end this video here and I will be back you know with a ride video I'll go for the app and I might make a video about safety gear because it's really important um, with this equipment here um, I'm gonna grab some tape and I'm gonna start taping this thing up so it's gonna look completely different you know the next time I actually um, shoot this thing because you know because I'll, I'll, I'll do like like a bit of work in it anyway guys um, that's it for me and so round a bit out and cheers and thanks for listening bye